Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Alathrix. And of course, welcome back to the sandbox mode where we're building something for the campaign. In today's video, we are building up the moray, which we managed to steal in the previous video. Now, of course, this isn't just the normal moray, this is a moray which isn't yet complete. This was originally part of a building, and I've cut it out and then realized something rather annoying. Almost the entirety of this craft is just mimics. Everything important is a mimic, so we are going to be really building all of the functional components pretty much from scratch, with only a few exceptions. It's going to be a bit of a difficult challenge here, and I've decided to not look at the original Moray, so we're going to end up with something probably quite unique and a little bit off the original design. Now, the only things I can remember from the Moray is it has two side advanced cannons, which I believe go here. I think it has spin blocks there, but I can't remember exactly, and I know its propulsion is definitely on a spin block, which is all set up over here. Is this actually what's controlling the spin blocks? No, this is the ammo processors. Yep, this is going to take a lot of work. So the first thing we're going to do is just remove all of the stuff on the outside. This is all the bits of scaffolding, which I didn't manage to remove before starting this, since it was all over the place, and all of the random bits and bobs, which make it look like a work site. Loads of crates, random ammo barrels. It's going to take a few minutes. Even the engines are just mimics. Why can't anything in life be real? So apparently, both of these are meant to be cram. Well, that's good. At least there's a hint there. Not all that much space, though. Okay, just open up a little bit, but that is very exposed. Now, the Moray is actually a design I really, really like, but it is also just a normal difficulty design, so naturally, it's not going to be insanely powerful for its cost. So, even though there is a almost functional weapon here, I am going to be removing it and probably adding my own weapons, just because not, not even so much I'm going to be improving the design. Clearly, the Lathrixian touch is needed here, but instead, it's more just... I want it to be more my own. Whenever I do a retrofit, I want to make sure I've done enough that I can be at least proud of it when it starts working. Otherwise, I just feel like I've just stolen design flat out. I need to do a lot of work to it. So, I'm going to be removing all of the hints of the old weapons as well as the mimics and everything else. There's enough space on the inside right now. We could convert this into a completely different type of aircraft. So, right now, I believe how the Moray works is that it circles its targets, it has cram cannons and advanced cannons kind of able to broadside, or at least it is able to fire pretty much anywhere. Also, where was that mimic? There it is. But instead, what we could do is make it face the target, and there is so much space on the inside, we could add a basic railgun. Or even just a rapid-fire advanced cannon going down the spine of the craft, and that could be the main source of damage for this thing. All of the side elements, then, could be very, very light anti-air, so it's still got a purpose. Remember, we are still going with the whole idea of vehicles have their own major role in the fleet. Just have a tiny bit of defense, something which the bomber desperately needs itself. That wouldn't be too difficult. We could even have a secondary weapon here as well. There's plenty of space for it. Because I'm still removing mimics left and right. There are a lot of them. Now, is there a way to make mimics turn back into mimics? Because sometimes it's very difficult to find out where the mimic actually is. There it is. It's actually in the gap itself. Still, I'm having too much difficulty though. Although there is a lot of places where I've got to repair the armor because, well, blocks are in the way. But yeah, all of this space here is more than enough to make a devastating weapon. That would certainly make it unique in comparison to the normal Moray. So, a few thoughts then. Right now, we are still versus the Deepwater Guard. The Deepwater Guard are not exactly notorious for heavy-duty armor. Even things like the Crossbones only have a few sections of heavy armor in their core to protect their AI. Everything else is metal and wood and not even stacked all that much. So, I don't think we really need to go all out with the extreme railguns, things like the 8 meter length shells. But at the same time, I don't really want to go with the 1 meter, although this would let us have some serious bullet hell to shells absolutely everywhere. 
I've seen that and done that too many times before. So I'm thinking it's kind of going the halfway point and using either the two, three, or four meter length shells. And then having a gauge somewhere between 250 and 500 millimeters. Probably 250. I have used that to a good bit of success before. Now you can min max these numbers, but I'm not really going to bother with that because. I just don't want to, honestly, right now. And there's way more things I need to sort out. That's the other thing. Not unlimited time and a lot of stuff needed to be done. So I think that's what we'll do. Railgun, auto loaders, perhaps a 2 meter sh uh, length shell. Then we'll have to figure out its power source because railguns take a lot of power. Okay, so I've decided what we need to do now is sort out the engine and sort out the ability for us to fly. Why all these mimics? <laughs> just everywhere. <laughs> they keep confusing me. Anyway... So, there are multiple ways we can do this, but honestly, looking at this back section here, it seems perfect for just having a dead blade here in the center, and then just having a grate on the outside. It'd be super simple to implement, and I think it would look really nice. Ooh, there's loads of versions of these now. The size almost works already as well, which is lovely. Let's go with normal metal. So that, we work it in, and then we have the Deadly Blade here. This way we can control forwards and backwards nice and easily. Now, originally, I am almost certain what it has on the back is the regular Heli Blades, and then where is what I am currently after? And then just a spin block. I think it has that, and maybe thrusters built onto it, because I recall thinking it looked awesome. I <laughs> vaguely remember that. But that's going to be a bit more difficult. Well, it kind of is, kind of isn't. We can easily set that with the AI, but this would be just way more responsive, I think. And it's something I've had more experience with. And considering we are making this Lathrixian, aka okay, terrible, I think that's what we're going to be doing. So all of this section here is going to be armoured off. And it's going to be used for our propulsion backwards and forwards. And then we'll add some... Oh, yeah, that's where we'll add the thrusters. Trying to keep some of the original style at least, so we can put a thruster there, a thruster there, I'm assuming they're meant to go here as well, yet yeah, so all of these can help control pitch, then we just need to control altitude, I've, I've already placed all the thrusters at the front, so we have pitch there, pitch there, we don't have roll currently, where on earth are we going to put our altitude, well, I guess we could just use a custom jet here, I never use the small custom jets, we could use them there, or we could have one major one here which would be really silly. But would be kind of interesting. Not too sure. Well, that's got fooled by Mimics again. Okay. Now, the AI should be up and running to a very basic degree. Oh, look, an enemy marauder. We pointed it. Kind of swayed it more like, but we can make that smoother later. Then we should just sit there. Yeah, could make this way smoother. That got way too close, now it's backing off way too much. They're saying that these kind of movements will throw off cram shells, so maybe I should make it less stable. Is there a way out of here? Yes, there is. Excellent. Okay, so that's the basic AI setup. This is as basic as it gets, really. It's just the hover AI. It then has three PIDs. Ooh, about to be hit. Whee! It has three PIDs, one for altitude. Ooh. One for roll and one for pitch, all on the default settings, so I haven't done anything with them, it's all the basic AI PIDs. And that should work just fine. So we'll sit far away like this, and we'll just absolutely devastate targets with the railgun, at least that's the idea. I am tempted to just go with a regular advanced cannon rather than the railgun, then just add an extra gun on top, extra gun on the bottom, but for now, our parasitic implantation of the railgun seems to be going well. Because that's kind of what we're doing here. We've got a weapon currently in R&D. we found the shell, and we're going to use it. Time for a quick test of the gun. This, by no means, is the finished product. That's doing just fine, honestly. We could make it far scarier than this, but right now... That's dead. Right now, our craft is still only just above the 100k mark, and that's with the weapon pretty much fully installed, just not armoured up or anything. Let's test against something a bit more chunky. Uh, where's the crossbones? There it is. Just so we can take a few more hits. Chunky? 
Yep, that's the description I wanted to go in there. So right now, just pure high explosive, just for sheer damage. We could change this for penetration depth fuses or something else. Uh, the damage isn't great, but the speed of the shells is pretty nice. Decent fire rate, good shell speed. Any medium targets will be shredded, but yeah, against larger targets like this. I mean, we have already done over 500,000 explosive damage. Yeah, maybe depth fuses will be better. Saying that, though, we have managed to carve out some of the heavy armor. You know, outside of things like the crossbones, that's going to do quite well, considering it's still fairly cheap, at least in the scale of things. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's just how the weapon's going to be. But we can have multiple of these in a fleet. At this rate, we're not going to go above 150,000 in terms of cost. And we do have plenty of space for additional weaponry. We could add some of these, since I do absolutely adore these and just never use them. Or we could have some basic AI, just really simple stuff, so it's not like it's the main role or anything of the craft. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave that. So right now, we are sticking with the 250mm railgun. It ends about here-ish. There's still plenty of space. We could make it way stronger, but then the cost's going to go up. So I think that's going to be the strength of the main gun. And now all that's left is to armor everything up, make sure everything's working correctly, and add a bit of redundancy. At the moment, I have literally just one steam boiler. <laughs> just one steam boiler near the back, and that's powering everything. If something hits me hard enough... That... Were they mimics, then? Why would you mimic just a wooden slope? They cost one. I don't get this craft. Trying to sneak some extra armor in pretty much everywhere we can. Especially closer to the front. Just going to bulk this bit up here. That's fine. Going to bulk up the bottom over here as well. Trying to keep the wooden blocks where they are for the most part, outside of places like that. Uh, up here, we could re-add some of the missile systems. It had loads. It had three on the front, two on the back. We could use missiles, or we could... I am almost certain it had anti-missile missiles, the missile interceptors. We could install some interceptors. Most of the infrastructure is basically already there. Are these mimics? No, these are portholes. I choose to believe that's where the toilets are. Because you poop through a porthole, apparently. Now, anyway, the point is, I think we could use missile interceptors to protect versus those, but I don't know if it's going to be worth the cost. I think it will. Just a couple of small missile interceptors, perhaps somewhere near the front. Just make sure the AI is set up. Yeah, let's try that. Bouncy. How long's the reload on these things? Pretty extreme, but yeah, a few extra shells, never hurt. Well, us. Again, reminder, detection systems not currently online, going off the default, which can be a bit weird. Yeah, quite like those on the side, actually. Just the normal fire, then occasionally, like a burst. The shells are a fair bit weaker than the main weapon shells, bear in mind, but yeah, that works fine. How about if I paint them a slightly different colour, though? Right now, they do stand out way too much on the craft. That works. Yeah, let's go with that. I like that a lot. Okay, yeah, so we're going to stick with those. They're nice and cheap. They're super easy, easy to add to the outside of the craft without limiting our armor. Could have one on the bottom as well. And then we'll add a couple of anti-air ones here because I don't need this much roll control. We have loads of redundancy there. We could put it on the back. I'm just trying to think of what the normal moray looks like. Again, I'm purposely not looking at the normal one, but I'm almost certain... Am I certain... I think there might even be guns here, but I've just left this as kind of like a, a walking area. In fact, I'm going to add some um, some of the decorations around here soon, just because I like how it looks. Loads of railings and everything just around here, just so it's somewhere people can stand. But I'm certain there's weapons there. 
Or is there? All I know is the Moray is normally covered in weapons, but instead we have rerouted all that resource for our main weapon, and now all the side weapons are simple and basic. Anyway, I continue. Changes. Sure, the bright red might blind you horribly, but you know what? This is still a pretty chill place to be. I quite like it, actually. Yeah, let's stick with that. And there's a nice excuse to add a little bit of external armor as well, so the lighter explosives won't instantly go into the core. Yeah, let's copy that over here. Okay, we're definitely going to lose this. I just want to see how well it handles itself right now. We are only 7k volume and nowhere near the cost of the crossbones, but I want to see if it can survive as I belch directly into the microphone because I'm just that classy. Well, it's turned off both of the main weapons. That's surprise. Oh, it's, it's actually destroyed its AI. No, no, it's just damaged the weapons. And it's got really far away. So maybe I won't go this far away because then we're going to have a Medrangard issue with the battles will look terrible because it's hard to see what's going on. That initial burst, though, using the side weapons is really nice. If we can have a couple of these in the distance just kind of chilling, and there's the burst again. The amount of damage we could do is insane. Aha, okay, let's see what happens when we get hit by Cram. Nope. The range is a natural defense versus Cram and the slight movements. I have tried to make it at least somewhat unstable, so it's constantly moving. And it is really throwing off enemy cram. So, yeah, this thing's going to be a nightmare for any enemies which aren't specialized against it. Similar to the Medrangard. It's a very medrangard -y design. For those who don't know what I'm, what I'm even talking about, the Medrangard was an old design from the last full Nita campaign. Which stayed really far away from combat and had extremely long range weapons and then strong shields and everything else in the front. It was in incredibly expensive and incredibly defensive. This one's a lot more aggressive for its cost. Most of the cost is just weapons. The armor is actually fairly light for one of my builds. But yeah, that works. Uses up ammo so quickly, though. Not all that much fuel. I'm surprised. Well, not all that many materials. It's only burning 31 materials per second, which isn't that much. And we can definitely lower that. Because I thought the railgun would need way more energy, but it just doesn't because of the size of the shells. Okay, never mind. I am ridiculously happy with how that went. I want more of these side weapons, because I love that burst occasionally. It's so satisfying to see. Obviously, it needs more ammo. I haven't yet finished off putting in all the ammo inside. These are going to be hooked up to a secondary AI. That's why they're not even trying to fight right now. Did that just bounce? But the railgun is very fun to watch. Okay, good. Might make it a bit closer to the enemy, though. Like I say, otherwise the fights are just going to be boring to watch. I'm really happy with how this is turning out. I'll armor up that in a second, but there we go. The secondary AI is basically just trying its best to target anything which is close and anything which is high up. Half the windows aren't even implemented. That looks a little bit weird, but I do kind of like it, so I might just leave it there. You can see through windows, can't you? You're looking at... An oil processor, on the other hand. <laughs> That's not too useful. Okay, uh, oil processors, you can go away. We're not even using a fuel engine anymore. Speaking of which, yeah, there's still so much stuff I need to clean up. Whoever designed this and made it look like a proper construction yard, you did a fantastic job. Seriously, it looked amazing. Do I want more range weapons on the back? Uh, Anti-aircraft? Uh, probably not. Just leave that as it is. Maybe use this for roll or pitch. In fact, yeah, pitch. That way if the front gets knocked off, we can still stay airborne. Nice and simple. Just going to place it right there. And you're going to be... Oh, you already pitch control. Fantastic. Don't need to arm you up anymore. I uh, guess we could do something similar to what we've done over here. Because that looks quite nice in my opinion. Just have it like this. And this is why I can't do time lapses, because my building is so all over the place. It's just nausea-inducing, even on, like, times two speed, I find. As my throat gurgles weirdly. Buddy, shut up. Okay, for now, this is done. So the grand total is 170,000 resource. We are just shy of 8,000 volume. 
And everything is done except for a little bit more of the internal armor and the detection system. So ignore the fact the shells are going to be a bit weird. I am now spending more energy though on our railgun, so the shells should be faster. And of course, for our final test, we will be facing off against the original Moray. Which is over here. Hello, original Moray. So let's have a look at you then. So the original Moray is eight thousand, so over 8,000 volumes. So we're less than that and we're just less on the materials. Actually got remarkably close. I thought you were cheaper than that, so I'm really happy there. So let's have a look-see then at the original. First of all, why did our rams turn blue? Uh, the front is done differently. Are those um, heat decoys? I think they are. So it has missiles there, missiles there. It's probably where most of the cost is coming from, honestly. So I was correct about the advanced cannons there. I was correct about there being cram cannons here. Or at least a weapon is what I said. The back I was correct about... Okay, so these are all control pieces, I think. An engine there as well. Loads of engines in this thing. Well, let's see how it goes. Okay, the initial cram missed, although there was a timed fuse that did detonate nearby. Our shells are faster than they used to be, as you can see. Ah, the, the detection system would have made a lot of those shots actually hit them, but that's fine. Yep, turns out long-range railguns do beat cram cannons, who would have thought? As, well, at least this distance. So, victory for the original, sorry, for the new retrofitted Moray. As you can tell, I am getting a little bit tired now. This took way longer than I expected. The enemy has been defeated. I think I will get closer, though. Though I love those side guns so much. I don't know why I like them so much, but I just do. Oh, looks like our recoil's a bit too high. Okay, so we need some recoil suppression. That's probably messing up the aim. Yes, it definitely is. Even on a static target. So, we need some more recoil suppression on the main railgun. Other than that, though... In terms of firepower, I think this is going to do just fine. All we need now, really, is some flags. Make it a bit more chaos. Oh, hello. We got hit, I think. No! My decorations! Wow, yeah, the recoil is really messing things up. I thought I had enough, clearly I hadn't. Okay. So right now, it burns 40 materials per second whilst in combat, far less so outside of combat. And that's not... it's not the worst when you think about a minute worth of fighting. Normally, battles don't last more than one or two minutes. It's not horrendous. We could lower it down, but we are spending a lot of energy now on the railgun to get those speeds of shell. Looks a bit like a really angry mosquito. So with that, I'm afraid I am all out of time for today's video. This took way longer than I expected. I'm going to be making some more changes, though first of all, I am going to try and make this video public since it has been way too long. So I will be reading comments about any suggestions about what to do next on this craft before I spawn into the campaign and finish everything off. So any recommendations, of course, are very, very welcome. I'm really happy with how this has turned out. It's just been a bit of a, uh, a long-winded thing. It's cleaning up the insides, making sure it can survive a few hits, and setting everything up. Though, I'm happy, which is rare. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff, helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. In the next episode, we'll be back in the campaign itself, and hopefully, we can spawn this in straight away. If not, probably in another episode or two. But definitely before the end of the Deepwater Guard. It must destroy its brethren to prove its loyalty. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Also, name suggestions are good.